Today we're going to be talking about how to evaluate a triple iterated integral. And in this particular problem, we're going to be taking the triple integral of the function x e to the negative y. Now the first thing we need to realize is that when we're taking a triple integral, we're actually going to integrate three separate times. Each time we integrate, we're going to integrate with respect to one variable. And you can see in our problem, we have x, y, and z. Those are going to be our three variables. So we're going to integrate three times each time with respect to one variable only. That's why it's called an iterated integral, because we do three different iterations of the integration, taking the integral with respect to only one variable each time. Now the question is, which variable do we start with? Do we integrate first with respect to x, then y, then z? First with respect to z, then y, then x? What's our order? Because it's not always the same. The order of our integration is going to be given to you by the order in which you have here dy, dx, and dz written after your function. The first variable with which we're going to integrate will be the first variable in this string here of dy, dx, dz. So what that tells us is that the first variable we're going to integrate with respect to is y, because dy appears before dx and dz. So we're going to integrate first with respect to y. What this also tells us is that because dy is the first in this chain, we're looking for the limits of integration with respect to y. Those are going to be here on this first integral, this inside integral, which is going to be 0 to natural log or ln of x. Those are going to be our limits of integration with respect to y. So because dy is on the inside here, we look for the limits of integration that are on the inside, and we're going to be starting from the inside working our way out. So y goes first. These are our limits of integration with respect to y x is going to go second. We're going to integrate with respect to x second. And our limits of integration are going to be 0 and 2z is what that says. And then our third iteration is going to be with respect to z. We're going to integrate with respect to z. And our limits of integration there are going to be 1 and 2. So that's how we read that triple integral. And again, we're going to be starting with y. So when we integrate with respect to y, we want to treat y as the variable and hold all of the other values as constant. So in this particular case, we've got x e to the negative y. We'll treat this y as a variable, but we'll treat x as a constant. So you have to picture that this x value here is just a constant coefficient on e to the negative y. Well, what would be the integral of e to the negative y? It would just be negative e to the negative y, right? Because the integral of, let's say, e to the x is just e to the x. It's the same thing. But remember that if we have a coefficient, which we do right here, the coefficient on that exponent is negative 1. When we have that coefficient, we have to divide by that coefficient after we integrate. So that's why instead of just e to the negative y, we're going to end up with negative e to the negative y. That means our integral, we'll go ahead and leave these outer two integrals here from 1 to 2 and from 0 to 2 z. So we're going to leave those. But this third one's going to disappear because those are going to become the limits on which we evaluate. So again, our integral now is just going to be negative x e to the negative y because when we integrated that x stayed, the negative sign that came from this y just jumps out in front here. So there's our integral. We're going to be evaluating this on the interval 0 to natural log of x. It's important though, because we're taking the integral here with respect to y, we want to make sure we write y equals 0 and y equals natural log of x. And the reason is, of course, because if we didn't do that, we might forget that when we plug in these values, maybe we'd plug them in for x, and they should only be plugged in for y because we just integrated with respect to y, and these limits of integration, 0 and natural log of x, only apply to y. So I like to write that out so I don't forget which variable I'm plugging in for. And then we go ahead and leave here dx and dz. Okay, so now we're going to plug in this interval from 0 to natural log of x. Remember that when we take essentially this definite integral like this, we plug in our upper limit of integration first. So we'll go ahead and leave these 1 to 2 and 0 to 2z. 
Okay, so plugging in our upper limit of integration first, natural log of x, we'll get negative x e to the negative natural log of x, we plug it in for y, then we're going to subtract whatever we get when we plug in 0. So we're going to say minus here negative x e to the negative 0, or we can just call that 0. And then we have dx and dz. So now what we want to do is just simplify this as much as we can before we integrate with respect to x and z. So the first thing we're going to want to do here is address this first term. We have e to the negative natural log of x. Well, when you have a coefficient out in front of the natural log, we have that negative 1 essentially right there. What we can do is we can take it, we can erase this negative 1, or let's say the constant coefficient was a 2 or a 3, we could do the same thing. But in this case, it's negative 1, and we can remove it from out in front and put it instead on this value that's inside the natural log. So now instead of just natural log of x, we have natural log of x to the negative 1. So essentially like this, we have natural log of x to the negative 1, like that. Well now, instead of natural log of x to the negative 1, this can become natural log of 1 over x, because remember, x to the negative 1 is the same thing as 1 over x. Now that we have it in this form, what we can say is that since we have e to the natural log of something else, e and natural log cancel with each other, and this 1 over x comes down to be multiplied by this negative x here. So what we end up with is negative x times 1 over x. That's what we end up with our first term. Of course, you can see there our x's will cancel, and we'll just be left with negative 1. So if we just replace all this and we got negative 1 here, that's now our first term. Our second term here, e to the 0 is just 1, right? This becomes 1. Anything raised to the 0 power is just 1. So that really goes away. We have minus a negative x, which is just going to be plus x. So that's how we can simplify what we had left over here. We have negative 1 plus x and then dx dz. So with our simplified integral, now we know that we need to integrate with respect to x because our next variable here is x. Our next inside variable is dx. So we're going to integrate with respect to x. Well, we're going to leave this outer integral from 1 to 2 here, integrating this with respect to x, negative 1 it becomes just negative x, x becomes plus 1 half x squared, and we're going to be evaluating that on the interval 0 to 2z. But remember, let's say x equals 0 and x equals 2 z like this, then we'll leave out the dz because we're still going to have to integrate with respect to z in a future step. Here we plug in our upper limit first, 2z, we plug that in for x, so we're going to have 1 to 2 left over. Plugging in for x, we're going to get negative 2z. Plugging in for x here, we're going to get plus 1 half times 2z quantity. 2z squared. Then we're going to subtract whatever we get when we plug in 0. Well, as you can tell, if we plug in 0 for x into both of these terms, we're going to get 0 for both terms. So there's no sense just subtracting 0. We don't really need to plug it in. So we're just left with that, and then we've got dz. Now, if we simplify one step before we go forward, we'll end up with negative 2z. Here, we're going to have 2z squared, which is going to give us 4z squared. When we divide by 2, we'll just be left with plus 2z squared and then dz. Now we integrate with respect to z because we have this dz left over here. When we take that integral, we're going to get z squared here. We divide by the new exponent 2. We're just going to end up with negative z squared. We integrate here with respect to z, and we're going to get plus 2 thirds z cubed. And we're going to be evaluating that on the interval z equals 1 to z equals 2. We'll plug in 2 first. 2 squared is 4. We apply that negative sign and we get negative 4. We plug 2 in here. 2 cubed is 8. 8 times 2 is 16. So we're left with 16 thirds. Then we're going to subtract whatever we get when we plug in 1. So we'll say minus. We plug in 1 here. 1 squared is 1. Apply the negative sign. We get negative 1. 1 cubed is 1 times 2 thirds. It's just 2 thirds. So plus 
two thirds. And now it's just a matter of simplifying with our arithmetic. So it looks like we're going to have a common denominator of three. Let's go ahead and apply that. To get a common denominator on this four, we multiply by three over three. So we get negative 12 thirds plus 16 thirds. We have minus a negative one, which is going to be plus one, but let's call that plus three over three instead. And then we're going to have minus a positive two thirds, which is going to be minus two thirds. And when we do that, we can see we get negative 12 plus 16 is a positive four plus three is a positive seven minus two is five. So our final answer is going to be five thirds. That's the value of this triple iterated integral.